friends, welcome back to the decaf math. I hope that you are doing very, 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 very well. I thought that today we could work through an example of the chain rule. And along the way, review what the chain rule is. So, let's see. Find D H D X if H of X equals E to the two X squared plus one. Okay, so I just made this problem up. I'm sure it exists somewhere out there, but this is my problem. And it's your problem too now. So, this, this problem, first of all, dh dx is, and it can be written as h prime of x, right? So if I were to ask you to take the derivative of this, what would you think the answer is? Well, you might go, okay, I know. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. You may or may not remember that, but you should if you don't. And so you might go, okay, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of e to the 2x squared plus 1 should be e to the 2x squared plus 1? Question mark? Question mark, question mark. Is it just that? Is that? Is it as easy as that? Mm, not quite. Not quite. It's a sideways face. I don't know. Not quite, right? Well, what do we do then? This, the derivative e to the x, is e to the x. That is true. But that doesn't mean e to the something else. The derivative of that is e to the that. This is an example of the chain rule. So, let's review what the chain rule is. The chain rule, ch -ch 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 chain rule, ch -ch 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 chain rule. Okay, the chain rule, the that chain rule helps us. Find the derivative of a composition comp composition of functions. What on earth does this? mean? <laughs> well, first of all, it's a composition of functions. Do you remember? The composition of functions is if we string them together, like f of g of x. And sometimes it's written like f of g of x. Okay? And what this means is I have an input x, okay? So when we talk about functions, we're talking about putting an input, then applying the function to that input and getting an output. So I put in an x, I take g of that x, so g is a function, okay? So g of x, that itself gives me an output. That output, I'm going to put that output as an input into f of that output, okay? So, let's go into this in a little bit more depth. Um, okay, so first of all, we're reviewing the composition of functions, right? So this is what it means. So in other words, um, let's look at this. If I have... Um, 
Although let's just use our original example like this, right? I can see that this is actually a composition of two functions. Let's look at this closer. So h of x equals e to the 2x squared plus 1. So really, I have this function up here. It's not just e to the x, it's e to the stuff, right? I like to call it stuff. So that stuff I'm going to call g of x because I'm going to put that stuff into my f of x function. So I'm going to say g of x equals 2x squared plus 1. It's just the stuff in the exponent, okay? Then I have, if you notice here, my uh, e to the power of stuff. So I can let f of x equal e to the x. I'm kind of just going to practice to recognize this, but the reason I'm going to write f and g like this is notice now that h of x is equal to f of g of x. Why is that? Because this e to the 2x squared plus 1, well, my g of x is, my little g of x is 2x squared plus 1, because that's what I set it to equal. <clears throat> so my 2x squared plus 1 becomes an input into my f of this thing, f of my g of x, but g of x is 2x squared plus 1. So basically, my x, the, the thing my input is 2x squared plus 1. Well, if I input 2x squared plus 1, my f of that tells me it's e to the 2x squared plus 1. So you can see it's e to the 2x squared plus 1, which is my h of x. So I'm picking my f and g functions such that f of g of x is equal to h of x. So what does that mean? It means if I have a problem like this, it kind of looks like a function within another function, like like it almost is e to the x, but not quite, it's e to the other stuff, okay? So the chain rule helps us to find the derivative of a composition of functions. So now that I wrote h of x as a composition of functions, the chain rule itself tells me that if h of x equals f of g of x, then h prime of x, or dh dx, equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. This is the chain rule. This is the chain rule. Choo-choo, chain, chain. Choo choo chain rule, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, this is what the derivative of h is equal to. Now, what on earth does this even mean? This, notice, is g of x plugged into, or g of x as the input of f prime of x. So we need to find what f prime of x is first. And we plug in this g of x into it, whatever g of x is, as the input to that function. Then we just multiply by g prime of x. So let's apply that to this so that we can see what's actually happening. So um, to find h prime of x, we need to first find f prime of x. So this part tends to be really confusing for a lot of people. And so what this really is, let's just do this step by step. So the first part is really you take f prime of x. So we know that f of x equals e to the x. So f prime of x is um, e to the x because we know 
probably should know by now that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So if f of x is e to the x, f prime of x is e to the x. But it's not just f prime of x, right? We need f prime of g of x. So in other words, this is my f prime function. So if I input x, I get, um, I get, if I input x, it's f prime of x, e to the x is my output of f prime of x. But if I input g of x, which is what this tells me, I'm putting in g of x, then I should get e to the g of x, which is e to the 2x squared plus 1, because my g of x was 2x squared plus 1. So f prime of g of x is my f prime of x, but I'm plugging in g of x in place of x. So e to the g of x, which is e to the 2x squared plus 1. So that's this part, okay? So it's e to the 2x squared plus 1. Then I need to multiply by the derivative of g prime x, which is, what's the derivative of 2x squared plus 1? It would be, you remember this, you bring the 2 down, so 2 times 3 is 4x, and then decrease the exponent by 1, so just 1, and then plus 1 prime is 0. That's it. And this is my answer, and so I can just rewrite that just to move this in front of the e to avoid any algebraic errors, and that's my answer. 4x e to the 2x squared plus 1. So what did I actually just do, really, right? Like, that seems really complicated. Well, this answer kind of almost looks like our guess, right? It almost looks like this answer, 4x e to the 2x squared plus 1, kind of looks like our e to the 2x squared plus 1. I just needed to multiply by 4x. So basically, if this were my answer, then that would be happy face. And that's right, we need to multiply by the 4x. So really, what we're doing is, with this question, because it doesn't quite look like e to the x, it's just e to the other stuff. It looks like a function within another function. What we need to do is we just basically, for all um, intents and purposes, we're just going to take the derivative like we normally would think to. e to the something, well the derivative of e to the something is e to the something, but then we need to also multiply so we can keep that e to the 2x squared plus 1 is e to the 2x squared plus 1 times, and then I need to multiply by the derivative of that stuff. So. This f prime of g of x is basically just taking the derivative of my f function, or just the normal derivative, as you would think to take the derivative, um, and keeping this 2x squared plus 1 in there. That's what that g of x is. And then I multiply by the derivative of this thing, okay? So it's kind of like just through practice, you'll see what the function should be. But really, you're just working outside in, basically, and multiplying by the derivatives of all the inside stuff. That's basically what this is. You take the derivative like you normally would think to, but then if it's not just x and it happens to be a function itself, you then multiply by the derivative of that. And if that's a function of something else, you multiply by the derivative of that as well, and you just keep going. Okay? So, let's just work through another example. Um, this will take some practice, but hopefully this is a pretty good start or maybe clarify what this thing means. But let's just do one like um, finding the derivative of ln 5x. Okay, so let's say h of x is this and we want to find what h prime of x is or the derivative. What is the derivative of this? So. This would be an example of a chain rule question because we know, okay, you might go into this and if you've never learned a chain rule, you might think, okay, well, the natural log of 5x must be 1 over 5x. 
and that's almost correct but not quite right you would definitely get this completely wrong on a test uh, you probably wouldn't even get partial credit just because you missed the chain rule completely even though it kind of looks close but what you need to realize is that if you have the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x First of all, this is one of the derivatives to memorize, right? The derivative, so let me probably do this. The derivative is one over x, but the derivative of five x is not necessarily just one over five x. I need to also multiply by the derivative of the stuff inside. So the derivative of five x is five. So my actual answer is one over x okay so what is this if we want to write the g and f of x stuff basically i work inside out inside out so ln 5x i could let g of x equal 5x and then my f of x is inside out so i'm just going to say this stuff is my g of x my f of x is ln of that stuff, so just ln x. And this way, notice f of g of x is ln of, it's like feeding the g of x into the input of f of x. So it's putting this 5x into the x here. So it's ln 5x. This is how we choose our f and g for this h of x so that we can apply the chain rule okay so then the next thing is the chain rule says now that we know that we have h of x equals f of g of x so i chose f of x and g of x such that they equal h of x now that we know these we know that the chain rule says h prime of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So again, we need to find the derivative of f uh, of f first, f of x. So if f of x equals ln x, f prime of x equals 1 over x, like we normally would. But we're putting g of x as the input. So everywhere there's an x on the f prime of x, I'm going to put in g of x. But g of x is 5x. So this equals 1 over 5x. See, I'm putting the 5x in place of the x here. Times the derivative of g of x, which is 5x prime. So that's how we get this original thing. We already got the answer up here, but I wanted to write out f of x and g of x clearly so that we can directly apply the chain rule. So that's how we get this is 1 over x. Okay, so basically as you practice applying the chain rule, one thing you'll notice is you won't need to write out f of x and g of x quite um, like all the time. You don't need to break it down into f and g like this. Um, as you practice, you'll just start to be able to see the composition in your head because when you do this part, practically speaking, like this f prime of g of x, as I like to think of it, it's basically what you would think the derivative should be. It's just basically, I have ln 5x, you would think that if ln x um, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, then you would think that ln 5x is 1 over 5x. So this is sort of like the quote incorrect part, <laughs> but then you need to also multiply by the derivative of the thing on the inside. So instead of having to write f of x and then find f prime of x and then plug in the g of x, you can start to see that you just take the derivative outside in basically, like Okay, ln of 5x might be 1 over 5x, the derivative of that, I mean, the derivative of ln 5x might be 1 over 5x, but then I also need to multiply the derivative of the thing on the inside. So, um, as you get more practice, it will just come easier and you won't necessarily need to write out f of x and g of x every single time. 
So let me give you a different kind of example. Let's say we have h of x equals um, um, 3x squared plus 2x all squared. Okay, so if we want to find the derivative, so we're still working with find h prime of x, right? So we can just expand this out, so square it, so 9x uh, to the fourth plus 2 times this times this plus the squared n, then we can find a um, polynomial and take the derivative of each part and add them together. But another way to do it is to apply the chain rule. So this one might look a little bit odd, but it actually is a composition of functions. But let's just see, like, it's kind of like looking at the big picture function and then seeing what stuff is inside. So in this case, you might be able to see that it's like, this is stuff. I like to just literally call it stuff. That's what I'm going to call g of x. So basically, it's stuff squared, right? So if I were to write it out with g of x and f of x, my stuff is 3x squared plus 2x. And then my, okay, so then it's stuff squared, right? My outer function, my f of x, is then x squared. See, so now if I do f of g of x, I'm basically plugging in 3x squared plus 2x into x, and so it's stuff squared. That's it. So when I take the derivative, you don't necessarily need to apply the chain rule like this every single time anymore. I just think of it as h of x equals something squared. It's just stuff squared. So then when I find the derivative, I'm just going to think, okay, stuff squared, the derivative of stuff squared, I would expect that to be 2 times stuff. 2 stuff. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but 2 times stuff. Why is that? Because... Um, the derivative of x squared is 2x. So I kind of follow that pattern. Stuff squared should kind of be 2 stuff. It just so happens, though, that stuff is a function. It's not just x, right? So you're putting in another thing. So you also, so if my stuff were 3x squared plus 2x, so I would think that it's just 2 times 3x squared plus 2x. But since, since stuff is a function and not just x, I need to also multiply by the derivative of my stuff, stuff prime, <laughs> okay? So then I need to multiply by whatever the derivative of this is, which is 6x plus 2. And this, whatever this works out to be, is my answer. So if you multiplied this out, foiled this out, you should get the same answer as if you um, expanded this out and found the derivative of each of the parts and added them together like you would a polynomial. But this is just a little shortcut way without having to expand this out. Does that make sense? So I wanted this to be an example of the macro picture, the bigger picture of when you're taking the derivative. So this only, you only need to use the chain rule if it seems like there's a function within a function. Of course, if you already have like, um, you know, like e to the x or x cubed, you can just apply your normal, your normal um, derivative rules. But our rules only apply for e to the x or um, ln x or, you know, um, x cubed. But if you have stuff, if you have stuff instead of x, the idea is you can just take the derivative like you would normally and then multiply by the derivative of the stuff. So again, in this case, it's like 3x squared plus 2x all in parentheses squared. It kind of looks like a bunch of stuff squared. Well, the derivative of stuff squared is just kind of like two stuff, two times stuff, because x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x. So stuff squared would be 2x, but then I need to multiply by the derivative of stuff. That's really it. That's all the chain rule is about. You just kind of have to chain things inside. 
Okay, well, I hope this helps clarify things and um, let me know if you have any questions. If I do find some more um, practice problems with the chain wall, I will definitely pop on here and just make a little video. Um, but these were just random functions that kind of came up for me in the top of my head, off the top of my head. So uh, if you have any more, I would love to help you with them. Um, a good, oh yeah, uh, just another good example of it would be like um, sine of, um, I don't know, x squared plus e to the x, okay? Um, this is chain wall because you already know the derivative of sine x, but this is stuff, right? So we're just going to call this the stuff. So sine stuff, the derivative of sine stuff would be, what's the derivative of sine x? It's cosine x. So it would be cosine of the stuff, but the stuff happens to be x squared plus e to the x. But then you also need to multiply by the derivative of the stuff. <laughs> so that would be cosine of x squared plus e to the x times 2x plus e to the x. Don't have to read the parenthesis. That's it. So it's sine stuff. Is cos the derivative of sine stuff is cosine stuff. But the stuff happens to be x squared plus e to the x times the derivative of stuff prime, which is cosine x squared plus e to the x times 2x plus e to the x. Okay, I hope that didn't confuse you more, but I just wanted to give you an example of um, just really you can use any function you've already memorized, presumably <laughs> you've already memorized your derivative table, or at least for the most part, know where to look. Um, you know, I don't even remember the derivative of tangent inverse or something like that of x, but I know where to look. You can just look up a derivative table. <laughs> And um, all you really need to do is then see if you have a function within that, or if it's just x. If it's just x, you already know the derivative. But if you have that kind of function within another function, then this is what you do. Okay, so if you have any other questions, um, let me know, comment them down below. I'd love to help you, and I will see you.